Hello, welcome to the channel. As many of you have been requesting emulation content for more modest PCs, I'm here today to bring you a video with tests on various emulators using an entry-level GTX 1050 with only 2GB of VRAM. We'll explore everything from more modest and optimized emulators to those in experimental stages with limited optimization. If you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to receive more information and updates on emulators. This video is offered by the members and Patreons of the channel. Thank you for your support. First, let's talk about the setup used in this video. All the hardware presented was released in 2018, including an i7-8700K processor running at stock clocks, and the star of our video, the GTX 1050 with 2GB of VRAM, also operating at stock settings. As for RAM, we used 16GB running at 2400MHz in dual-channel configuration. Currently, the processor is still capable of handling most recent games, although it may reach 100% usage in certain cases. However, the GTX 1050 has a fairly limited processing power. The last time I tried to run a PC game using this graphics card was in 2018 with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Even when setting the game to the lowest settings and the resolution to 720p, the performance was not acceptable. However, it's important to mention that Ubisoft is known for their lack of optimization, which affects performance even on more powerful hardware. I also remember playing Borderlands 3 at its launch in 2020 through Steam. In that case, the graphics card provided playable conditions, maintaining a frame rate close to 60fps at a resolution of 720p. Therefore, it's evident that the focus of this graphics card is to achieve performance at 720p, making it difficult to consistently reach 60fps in more recent games. In the following tests, we will try to run the emulators at 1080p, but it's important to note that this can often exceed the VRAM capacity of the GPU, which can lead to crashes or various issues. When testing the emulators, I will provide information about the actual resolution they are running at. I want to make it clear that all the emulators were tested through Parsec which means we cannot expect high quality gameplay due to high input delay and video problems, as the GPU has limited capacity to emulate, record, and stream simultaneously. We will test from handheld console emulators to the heaviest emulators available today, such as RPCS3 and Xenia. Let's start with the basic and most optimized one, the PSP emulator, PPSSPP. All games were run at an internal resolution of 1080p and 2x MSAA. Yes, we were able to enable MSAA on the GTX 1050. I tested this emulator with Mega Man Maverick Hunter X, which is one of my favorite games on this console. Here, the processor was practically idle, but when we look at the GPU, we see that 1.5GB of VRAM was utilized, compromising about 75% of the video memory. The game performed well and, in my opinion, was completely playable. I also tested something faster, like Burnout Legends, which is natively locked at 30fps, and we didn't have any issues. Now, let's move on to the next emulator. I decided to test another handheld console emulator, but this time with less optimization, Citra, using the Canary version. Here, I decided to push it a little further, using the resolution of 2000 by 1200 and the Vulkan API. I tested the two lightest games on this system, which are Kirby Triple Deluxe and New Super Mario Bros. 2. The result was practically the same as with PPSSPP, but here the processor worked a bit more, reaching about 15% usage. As for video memory, we are still close to 75% usage. Therefore, the result we have here is that for playing older handheld consoles, the GPU still delivers excellent results, allowing you to even increase the resolution to 1440p if desired. From now on, we will only test home console emulators, starting with the less demanding ones. Let's begin with DuckStation, the best emulator for the original PlayStation and practically the best emulator available in terms of solid performance and good accuracy. In DuckStation, we are using a resolution of 1440p and testing 3 games, 1 2D game and 2 3D games. We are applying various enhancements to improve the problematic polygons of the PlayStation 1. Firstly, we have the classic Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which runs very well as expected, without artifacts, slowdowns, or graphical issues, even when the game mixes 2D and 3D elements. The next classic PlayStation 1 game we tested is Tekken 3, which also runs perfectly without any issues and consuming only 50% of our available VRAM. Lastly, we have one of the most visually appealing games on the console, Gran Turismo 2. Even with a resolution well above the focus of our GTX 1050, 
we obtained excellent results. Once again, our GTX 1050 exceeded expectations. Moving on to the next generation, I tested two Dreamcast emulators, Flycast and Redream. While there are several emulators available for this system, these two provided the best results, as mentioned in the video. Our first test was with Sonic Adventure 2. In Redream, in the free version of the emulator, it is not possible to change the resolution, so I'm running it at the emulator's default resolution, which seems to be 2x the internal resolution. On the other hand, Flycast is running at 1440p using the Vulkan API. Both emulators perform very well, and the GPU is able to make the most out of this system, even at higher resolutions than it was designed to handle. As you can see, even though Flycast is using a significantly higher resolution, it consumes fewer resources. Therefore, our next game will be tested only with this emulator. I chose Metropolis Street Racer to show that even a faster paced game locked at 30fps and running at a high resolution still has plenty of performance for our GTX 1050. Although the emulator's frame time shows a somewhat unusual result, so far, the GPU has passed all the tests without issues. Our next emulator will be PCSX2. We know that many still encounter issues with this emulator, but version 1.7 brought many improvements, and now virtually all PlayStation 2 games are playable from start to finish. Here too, we are using a resolution of 1440p, FXAA, high precision settings, and some games with texture packs. Now the question is, will the GTX 1050 face any bottlenecks? In the case of Burnout Dominator, using a texture pack, we couldn't even utilize 50% of our video memory, and GPU usage was only at 60%. So, let's push it further and use the most visually appealing games on the console. First, I chose Tekken 5 with a texture pack. Here, the quality is so good that the game looks more like the PlayStation 3 version than the PlayStation 2. Tekken 5 barely puts a strain on our GTX 1050. Lastly, we have Gran Turismo 4. GT4 pushed the graphics of the PS2 to the limit. Here we are running it without a texture pack because the texture pack for this game weighs around 25 gigabytes. But we'll keep the resolution at 1440p with FXAA enabled. The result is still impressive, but for the first time, we can notice aliasing in the game. Fine tuning may be necessary to fix this issue. Now, let's move on to another highly optimized emulator, Dolphin, the GameCube and Wii emulator. I'll test one GameCube game and two Wii games. We'll be using the Vulkan API, a resolution of 1920x1584, 2x MSAA, and 16x anisotropic filtering. The first game we'll test is Mario Kart Double Dash, which is one of my favorite Mario Karts. Using a texture pack, the game performs better than a PlayStation 2 game, except for VRAM usage, which again reaches about 75% of our available VRAM. Now, jumping into Wii games, let's start with Donkey Kong Returns, also using a texture pack. It consumes 75% of our VRAM but doesn't present any issues during gameplay. Everything is very smooth and without any problems. The next game is Super Mario Galaxy, also using a texture pack. So far, we have the same results. Will any emulator make the GPU struggle? Let's test CMU. Now, the GPU will work hard. We'll run all the games at 1080p. Starting with Super Smash Bros., with four characters on the screen at the same time. I had never played this game before, so the shaders were not pre-compiled. Even so, I didn't encounter any issues. The game runs at a stable 60fps, despite the 75% VRAM usage. And of course, this was the game you all were wondering if it would run. So let's go with The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. We're running it with most of the hacks enabled, shadows on ultra, Nvidia anti-aliasing improvements, and unlocked FPS. The performance is better than on any console the game has been released on to date. We didn't reach 60 FPS, but we came very close, averaging between 48 and 53. Of course, if you decrease the render distance or shadow intensity, you can get closer to 60 FPS. But here we're testing the best scenario this emulator can achieve, and we're using almost all of our video memory, with only 200 megabytes free. The next emulator we'll test is Xenia, the Xbox 360 emulator. Xenia is still in an early development phase, and the minimum requirement to run it is a GTX 980, which is about 63% better in games than the GTX 1050, in addition to having double the VRAM. We won't go easy on the GTX 1050, and we'll test the first Forza Horizon. 
Although the resolution shown on the screen is the one the game was being recorded at, we had to sacrifice resolution to make Xenia work, now using only 720p for all the games being shown. Even so, all of our VRAM was consumed, causing several artifacts. The GPU reached 100% usage for the first time, and the processor also struggled with Xenia, reaching 90% usage. In the case of Xenia, it pushed our hardware to its limits, struggling to maintain 30 FPS. But we didn't stop there and also tested Forza Motorsport 4, with all the patches applied. Once again, all of our VRAM was utilized, but the CPU still had some room to spare. The next game we tested was Skate 3, with unlocked FPS. This game needs to run at 30 FPS to be fully playable, and the GTX 1050 managed to maintain an average above 48 FPS. A great result for an entry-level GPU, isn't it? Lastly, we tested Sonic Unleashed, another game that demands a lot of hardware. It experienced some stutters during gameplay, utilizing almost the full load of the GPU and around 90% of the available video memory. Would you be able to play on Xenia under these conditions? Now, let's move on to our PCS3, the PlayStation 3 emulator. I tried to test more games, but the emulator crashed when the GPU memory was fully utilized. However, I managed to run some of the most visually stunning games, including Tekken 6, even at 1080p resolution. The game is highly optimized, consuming less VRAM than emulators of older consoles, and manages to maintain a stable 60fps even in environments with heavy lighting and water particles. Now, let's test Gran Turismo 5. Here we have to make some compromises because if we try to use 1080p resolution, the game crashes on the initial screen due to lack of VRAM. However, the GTX 1050 performed well, achieving an average of almost 50 FPS in this game, which is not yet fully optimized. Another game I tried unsuccessfully was God of War 3. The game doesn't even start and instantly crashes due to lack of VRAM. So keep in mind that if you want to emulate PlayStation 3 with this GPU or another equivalent with 2GB of VRAM, many games will have to run at 720p, and some won't work at all. Let's move on to Nintendo Switch emulators, specifically Yuzu and Ryujinx. We'll start with Yuzu, which has better performance but lower accuracy. In Yuzu, we're using native resolution and BC1 texture compression. I've done other tests without texture compression, and the emulator crashes when loading the game in almost 100% of the cases. The first game I tested was Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, with FXAA mods and disabled dynamic resolution to provide a better visual experience. I'll show side by side the emulator running at a locked 60 FPS and with unlocked FPS. Surprisingly, my average FPS in this game was above 90 FPS, even with the graphics enhancement mods. At no point, at the default resolution, did the emulator come close to utilizing all of the VRAM. The texture compression, at least for me, didn't make the game look worse. An excellent result. We also tested Nintendo's latest release, Zelda. Tears of the Kingdom, with native resolution and unlocked FPS. Despite some hiccups during shader compilation, the game runs very well. If you're not a demanding player, you'll certainly enjoy exploring this new Hyrule. I've already made a comprehensive video on how to configure this game to run on weaker GPUs, and I'll leave the video link in the description and card for those who want to check it out. I tested Pokemon Scarlet, but the game crashes due to lack of VRAM. Finally, let's test Ryujinx, which is a Nintendo Switch emulator focused on accuracy. Most games will perform better on Yuzu, but Ryujinx offers greater accuracy, and accuracy always comes at a cost in terms of performance. We will conduct the tests at native resolution, using the Vulkan API and with texture compression enabled. In the first test, I used the game Bayonetta 3, which is not yet fully playable. It experiences significant frame drops during shader compilation. At the time of recording, the GPU was fully utilizing its VRAM, so when changing scenes, the emulator simply crashed due to lack of video memory. In the second test, I used the game Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, with 8 characters on the screen. Here we had surprising results, even without pre-compiled shaders, the game managed to maintain full speed with only a few hiccups. In summary, if you're using Ryujinx with a 2GB RAM GPU, you need to be cautious with heavier games as they may experience frequent crashes, and you could lose your progress. This was our video, testing all these emulators required a lot of work, so I rely on your help to share and provide feedback. Until the next video.